The 2024 wide receiver class might be one of the most loaded draft classes of all time. You've got three elite blue chip talents at the top of the draft. You've got next level athletes, true X wide receivers, shifty slot playmakers, speed demons, and true all levels of the field separators. We could see as many as 15 guys go in the first two rounds, which means we have a ton of options as dynasty managers. However, however, There are some guys that the Dynasty community is undervaluing, and on today's episode of the Regression of the Meme podcast, we are breaking down three wide receivers that we think are being undervalued in Dynasty rookie drafts. I'm your host, Sean Moran, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, my good friends, and my fellow knowers of ball, Keegan Thompson and Aiden Haller. Keegan, how you doing, man? I'm good. I missed the uh, last episode, but I like the uh, Magnificent Seven Magnificent seven breakdown, uh, comparing the top seven to stocks. Yeah, magnificent. Um, <laughs> no, oh, I'm sad I missed the last episode, but you guys held it down. That was some good quality content, but I am good. I had some fun digging deep into some of the other prospects in this class. There's a lot of wide receivers to talk about, so I'm happy to hit on some other ones that maybe aren't getting talked about as much. Aiden, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well. No complaints over here. I am. I'm just ready for the draft. Um, we are. Feels like we've been doing this for like what feels like forever. There's there's rumors of the Bears going after Marvin Harrison now, um, trading up. So I just like no more rumors. I need to see people holding jerseys, uh, shaking Roger Bell's <laughs> hand. I'm I'm ready to go. Today's episode is pretty simple. We have three wide receivers in the 2024 class that we think dynasty managers are undervaluing at this point. Probably should and that probably should be prioritized in rookie drafts. This is our first episode covering the 2024 wide receiver class. We covered the top seven of this class on our last episode titled the magnificent seven of the NFL draft. If you hadn't had a chance to watch that, you know what to do. Our next episode will focus on three overvalued wide receiver prospects in the NFL draft. So look out for that in our feed later on in the week. All right, guys, undervalued wide receivers. We're going to kick things off with you, Keegan. Tell us why you're prioritizing the most under the radar receiver from the Washington Huskies. Yeah, so that wide receiver would be uh, Jalen McMillan, the kind of uh, often not talked about wide receiver of the three. Obviously, Rome is projected top 10 pick. Uh, Jalen Polk could be going as early as the second round, potentially third, depending on who likes him. But they're both projected to be top 100 picks in this draft. And the third one, Jalen McMillan, might slide right outside of that. If a team likes him, I could see him being right right on the edge of the top 100. So Jalen McMillan is a primarily slot player. He played about 90% of his snaps out of the slot, both in 2022 and in 2023. And as teams move to more 11 personnel groupings, like around average, they're playing about 57 to like 66% of snaps in 11 personnel right now. So I think the emergence of a third wide receiver option is very good for fantasy. I think in the past, we probably wouldn't have wanted to draft a slot only player, but I also don't think Jalen McMullen was only a slot wide receiver by his skills as well, too. I mean, good 40 time, four four seven. he's six one, like 191 pounds, and his production is there. He had an earlier breakout than Jalen Polk did. He outproduced Jalen Polk by a wide margin in 2022. I mean, every stat, you know, every key stat, targets, receptions, yards, yards per reception, touchdowns, PFF receiving grade. I mean, he just outclassed him in everything in 2022. And then obviously 2023, it was much different. Jalen Polk kind of assumed that role, but he was injured, missed four games. He only started seven of the games that he played um, in 2023. So he took a back seat, but I think with, like I mentioned, how today's offense is changing, I think for me, there is a better opportunity for him to slot into somebody's offense as a third wide receiver that plays in 11 personnel and produce right away. Slot targets are not a bad thing. They're easy targets. They're, your catch rate is increased from the slot, which will favor your PPR league formats, which most dynasty leagues are. And the raise in his catch rate percentage from playing in the slot, getting those easy catches will outweigh his lesser A dot, maybe from playing in the slot. He's also a good yak person as well, too. You know, his yak is compared to Jalen Polk is a little bit better. And, you know, obviously it is from the slot, but I think there's a lot of good things to like about his player profile. He has really good hands. Like he is very, very good in terms of like just catching the ball he's also a really skilled route runner which i think he does better than jalen polk i'm not saying he does better than rome but you know the 2023 injury sucked for him but if you just go back and look at 2022 and just how he produced 
this Washington offense. I'm pretty bullish on Jalen McMillan. He's currently the wide receiver 18 on Keep Trade Cuts Dynasty rookie rankings. And Jalen Col- Jalen Polk, his teammate for reference, is the wide receiver 12. So that's a pretty big gap for players that pretty much had the same amount of production. And McMillan was better than him in 2022. And it took McMillan being hurt in 2023 for Polk to really break out. So that that's interesting. When you, when you highlighted this, Keegan, it definitely was like, hmm, Jalen McMillan was pretty good. Every time I watched the Huskies, he was making plays. Why is he so much more undervalued than Polk? And I think that's a really good question to ask. It is it just the slot issue where Polk can play outside as a flanker and McMillan primarily lived as a slot, like a power slot, big body slot type wide receiver? Yeah, I think people will go if they do dig into the stats, like you'll go look at his success on the outside, Jalen McMillan's success, that is. And there was definitely some drops. Like his PFF drop rating wasn't great when lining up on outside or I playing saw some drops with- on tape. Yeah, there were yeah like with the deep ball stuff. Like it is very much. It, it doesn't appear to me that that's his game <clears throat> right now. I'm not saying he can't like go in and out. Like only, he's not only going to play in the slot. Most wide receivers don't play 100 percent of the plays in the slot, right? Like he'll get moved around. But his role as a slot receiver to me will be much easier to earn than someone like Jalen Polk's if he goes into an NFL offense. Like if Jalen Polk goes into a quiet a crowded wide receiver room and he's competing for wide receiver two snaps, that is a lot harder. Like you think of somebody like JSN who had to compete with Tyler Lockett and for that kind of second wide receiver set spot, it's not as easy to get on the field. And if NFL teams are going to be playing 11 personnel, McMillan profiles as somebody who can produce right away as a third wide receiver in that slot position. I mean, the high end cop for him is, Amon Ross St. Brown. And that's not just me. You know, that's JJ Zacharyson and other people have comped into that as well. And I think with his success in the slot, the other intangibles he has being a really good route runner and like natural hands, he's definitely not a contested catch guy. He didn't get a ton of contested catch targets both in 2022 or 2023. I just think he has a better chance to step into a role and produce right away because of where he will play. And it'll be much harder for somebody like a Polk to emerge as a team's wide receiver two right out of the gates as a rookie. I just don't see it happening as fast. Yeah. And people love Polk as like a, as a technician. Uh, a lot of people gas him up as, as a route runner. Um, I, the way, when I watch McMillan though, I see kind of, he plays tight end a little bit, you know, like he sits in zone uh, very clearly can beat slot corners, looks adept at matching up with linebackers and safeties. He looks like a really useful weapon Um, And he played in a pro-style offense, uh, the offense that now, coincidentally, the Seahawks are going to run. So I I think that he could translate quite well in the NFL. And I think the real thing for dynasty managers is you can have Jalen Polk as the wide receiver 12, or you can get someone who basically produced better than him six spots lower. Uh, Aiden, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on Polk versus McMillan? Do you have a strong opinion either way on these guys? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned both Seattle and Keegan mentioned JSN. Is I see a lot of JSN in McMillan. Um, you know, maybe it's the number, similar frame, similar kind of route running skills. Um, I'd probably prefer McMillan myself, um, especially when you bake in the price. I think like that's a third round pick, probably looking at him. What wide receiver eighteen? We said like you're looking at you know a much cheaper player. Yeah, like we said, someone who could easily outperform him and did outperform him quite frankly um, in 2022. So again, it's, you know, kind of choose your flavor with the two, but at that point there's other receivers I'd rather take around the pull range and then maybe wait for McMillan. So um, no, his tape is really fun to watch. This is a guy that, you know, was all over the field of Washington, especially in, in 2022. And hyper athletic too. Keegan touched on it. Um, He ran a pretty damn good, weight height adjusted 40 at six foot 200 pounds essentially uh four four seven he's no malik neighbors but he's an athlete and then he jumped really well too Uh, he did well in the vertical and the broad his his shuttle and his three cone which is his agility drills which i think separates him from like a jsn type in my opinion as a separator uh weren't as good but nothing bad like his his (laughs) relative athletic score was 9.3 Pretty damn athletic. Which ranked 208 out of 3,090 receivers since 1987. This is a pretty athletic dude. Um, Keegan, last thoughts on McMillan oh, yeah. before we jump to the next guy. I, I think last year there were like was this conundrum that's happening now in the drafts. It's like, how do we find our next 
Puka Nakua and like you're never going to find that like that is such a thing but I think obviously Amon Ra is really good but I think fantasy dynasty managers should be looking more at that like who is your next Amon Ra like maybe you're a fourth round guy like he's not going to break rookie records but he's going to come in and have an immediate impact and earn a much larger role because he does have a really good skill set and maybe the production wasn't necessarily there in college but I think Jalen McMillan has a good case to be a really productive player in the NFL. Yeah, he, he'd be fun replacing Tyler Boyd uh, in Tyler Boyd's role with the Cincinnati Bengals. I think he would fit in really well in that Zach Taylor 11 personnel offense. It would make a ton of sense. And then if T. Higgins were to leave and he showed that he can handle a high target volume, could set up like really nicely for Jalen McMillan. Uh, That'd be so fun. Yeah, yeah I'm into I, that. I like that landing spot for him. Yeah. Uh, before we move on to our next wide receiver, two things. If you are part of the 70% of people who are watching this video but aren't yet subscribed to the Regression to the Mean podcast, you know what to do. Like this video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the notifications to make sure you aren't missing any of the draft content that we are dropping weekly for you all this offseason. Second, we love hearing from you guys in the comments below. Let us know what wide receivers you love, you hate in the comments. We, we really appreciate it. Like, seriously, keep it up. We, we, we live for the uh, feedback here from the mean team. The second wide receiver that I think the fantasy managers should be prioritizing, and this is a fan favorite of mine throughout this entire process, is Lad McConkey. I cannot stop Lad and my McConkey gentleman, uh, the wide receiver out of Georgia, uh, the, the, the gym rat. What, what, are, what, are the, what, are the, what are the terms? Scrappy gym rat. Um, Heart of the team, heart of the champion, Good fundamentals, fundamental player. big fundamental. Yeah. Uh, yep. Any uh, white wide receiver tropes we can throw out there. He's 5'11", 186 pounds. He played on a really prominent, high-performing team. So a lot of people want to comp him to Julian Edelman, Wes Welk, or Cooper Cup. He's not that player. He is not a layup slot-only player like those guys are. Um, this is a guy that can run a full route tree as a flanker wide receiver. And his stats showed that in college where he was out wide on 70% of his snaps against 30% in the slot. For context, that's very similar to what Tank Dell just ran in in the NFL. Um, That flanker wide receiver that can run deep routes, um, that can really hit explosives with the ball in his hands. He's currently the wide receiver six right now on keep trade cut. Um, Behind the likes of, say, Brian Thomas Jr., behind the likes of Xavier Worthy on, on keep trade cut, I personally have him as my wide receiver four right now. Um, and I feel like there's a major delta when you get up that high between the wide receiver four, wide receiver six. And I feel like Brian Thomas Jr. is amazing, but he's a bit of a one trick pony in terms of his speed. And there's a lot of development that needs to happen to his game. Xavier Worthy, I'm a, I'm a favorite of his, but he projects more as like a gadget specialized player that's going to have to hit home on efficiency. And I feel like Lab McCockey is someone you can drop into an offense right now to be the number two and potentially develop into like a Tyler Lockett type player. Um, I really think he's got the chops to be an excellent wide receiver in the NFL. And again, he's an elite route runner, an elite separator per Matt Harmon over at reception perception. He had a 85th percentile success rate versus man and an 81st percentile success rate versus zone. And he specializes in the deep and intermediate routes as a true flanker wide receiver. That's where a lot of points are coming from over the middle of the field, think 10 to 15 yards. And he has excellent hands and he's excellent at working the boundary. So he's nimble, he's agile, and he crushed it at the combine in terms of athleticism. He ran a sub 4-4, four, four, he ran a four-second shuttle, and he had a 6.72 three-cone drill. This dude is an absolute athlete, and you see that on tape when he's breaking tackles. Like he, He's shifty. He, he's a bit of a tackle-breaking yak guy, and you don't expect that with his game. Um, but you, you definitely see that. So he takes advantage of his athleticism on tape. However, if we're going to think a little bit negatively about Lad McConkey, um, he's a bit of an analytical conundrum, guys. Uh, he has poor raw stats. So like, if you look at his like receiving yardage, market share, like t- percentage of team total receiving yards, it doesn't jump off the page. Um, but then if you look at his efficiency numbers, they're, they're super elite, like over three yards per route run. Um, he didn't run a lot of routes. He was he was injured a decent amount in college. And then they had this weird wide receiver rotation they had at Georgia. So I've seen comps to Emmanuel Sanders. I've seen comps to Tyler Lockett. I think Ladd, there's not really much to hate on about his game. Maybe he gets a little bit stronger. He can stay healthier. But this is someone that I think could be a true difference maker in the NFL and someone that I'd easily feel comfortable taking in the first round of Dynasty rookie drafts. Um, 
what are your thoughts, guys? Like, I know this is a lot elite tape, weird stats. Are you leaning more on the tape and his athleticism? Or are you kind of worried about his stats and his in college and how that ranks in the NFL? I like the tape. Um, I think his combine numbers like made me far more comfortable with him too. Like the dude is, is super athletic. Like everyone wants to be like Cooper cup. And it's like, this guy is significantly like quicker than Cooper cup was um, coming out of the combine. Like you can see it on tape. Dude's just silky smooth. Um, a destination that I keep seeing that would just be like an absolute nightmare for the NFL would be the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, <laughs> oh, slotting him in with uh, Rasheed Rice and and Travis Kelsey. I think like that's just a guy that's going to be open all the time. But you know, Pat Mahomes is just going to absolutely adore. Um, so I think that'd be a, a really fun landing spot. But Lad's good. Um, to your point, like you've got the top three wide receivers, and then you kind of got that like murky tier two. Whereas I think like he's the safest one out of those guys. Like Xavier Worthy could be super fun. Brian Thomas Jr. could be super fun. But I feel like in terms of floors, this feels like the safest floor out of that tier two. Um, so I like that. like Because you're probably looking at a late one, early two for Lad, depending on number of teams in your league, et cetera, how it shakes out. Um, so, you know, do you go for the home run and you want, you know, absolute track speed out of Xavier? Or, you know, do you want kind of a safer guy um, that I think, especially in like PPR formats, is going to play more on a week-to-week basis. You wouldn't understand Lad McConkey just from looking at stats. Like you would have to have watched Georgia the past two years to understand why he doesn't have like this massive list of statistics. And if you go back to 2022, he was a target leader for Georgia. And Brock Bowers him, and him tied for 82 targets. But obviously it shifts in 2023. But those easy targets, the schemed plays, like the quick out passes, like those all went to Brock in 2023. And it doesn't mean Lad's not good. Like it also just means that Brock Bowers is a phenomenal football player. And so when you have to like look at the analytics or the stats, it's hard to pick Lad McConkey out of a group and say like, well, this guy is going to be a stud when you're just doing that. But if you watch Georgia and you're obviously aware of Brock Bowers, it's easy to add some context and say, well, it wasn't really his fault, but it's like, what did he do with those targets? Extremely efficient, great PFF grades. Like he is such a nuanced route runner and like so much more than those white slot guys that everybody wants to compare him and comp him to. He just has so much more to his game than that. And yeah, just juice. Somebody in the NFL is going to get a really good wide receiver in Lad McConkey. And it's just like, we love analytics and it's very predictive of fantasy production, but sometimes you have to like, add context and not throw it out the window, but just like see how efficient was he on the minimum action that he did get in Georgia's offense and kind of like throw in some highlights and see like how he performed when he did get the ball because balls in his hands or the balls coming his way. He was such an effective football player for Georgia. I I like lad a lot. Yeah. He he could have a Zay flowers type rookie season uh, where he comes in, goes for over a thousand. I don't see him being like the number one in an offense at least right away, but comfortably being the number two option in a passing offense out of the gates. He has that kind of uh, talent. The next guy that we have here, I'd say is probably the most egregious ranking um, based off of his analytical profile, based off of his athletic testing, based off of his tape. This is someone who's really climbing up the ranks and he's behind. It's kind of crazy to see where this guy is ranked. Uh, Aiden, tell us why you're prioritizing Ricky Pearsall in Dynasty Rookie Drafts. Yeah, yeah, this is a guy that I've had a ton of fun watching you know, over the last season and um, kind of throughout this draft process here um, that I think is super undervalued. To your point, at wide receiver 13, uh, feels significantly too low for my liking. Um, pretty good size in terms of the wide receiver position. He's 6'1", 190, so definitely on the leaner side for his size. Um Really good athlete, though. The guy ran a 4.41 at the combine on the RS scale, 9.78. Um, so, like, at six this one. is an athletic yeah. dude. Um, yeah. At 6.1 is, you know, super exciting. One of the biggest knocks on him is he is going to be 24 this fall. Um, yeah. So, you know, he's one of those guys, you know, the COVID years. He, he played five years. Took a while to really find his footing, too. Played three years at ASU. Um, didn't really do much. Didn't do a whole lot last year with Anthony Richardson at Florida, but absolutely exploded this year. Um, pretty good year. 65 catches, just under 1,000 yards, and four touchdowns. I'm sure most of you have seen some of the catches he made last year. Just 
absolute freakish hands. Best, um, I think he has the best catch in college football last year for sure. Laser. Unbelievable. Yeah, him and Keon. Him and Keon had those two crazy catches. Yeah. Unbelievable, dude. Um, so you know, drop rate very low statistically throughout his career. You know, like we're talking like three percent or less year over year. So like you know, very sure-handed. Um, Matt Harmon too just did some work on him, and the numbers are pretty impressive in terms of um, kind of you know how he shakes up here. He's you know eighty-seven percent tile versus man, sixty-nine percent versus zone. Um, where he does struggle is against press. He's in the fifty. First percentile there, um, you know, can it's definitely get you know. It's not bad. It's not, it's, it it it's shows terrible. promise of a guy who could line up as a true X, which is I didn't have that on my bingo card, right? I don't know if yeah. that's where he's best suited in the NFL, but I mean, we're talking about a guy who can play all over the formation. Yeah, to your point, he played fifty-one percent of his snaps in the slot. And was almost equal in terms of the left we and the right that. side, you know, we love that. which side he but he was even in the backfield a little bit. He was in the backfield just shy of 5% of his snaps. So to your point, I think he profiles more as a slot wide receiver in Probably. the NFL. Probably. But I think this is a guy that could easily step in in day one and be a contributor. You know, the route running is super crisp, you know, very quick, good separator, very sure handed. Um, I really like him personally. Wide receiver 13 feels too low for me. I would have him in my top 10. Um, you know, this is someone I'll be targeting in my dynasty drafts for sure this year. It's uh, the tape is really fun on this guy. If, if any listeners out there have not watched Ricky Pierce, I'll just, just go search his catch. It was, it was unbelievable. But this guy, <laughs> no, he's, he's making fun catches every Sunday. Have you guys seen the videos of him as, as a running back where they give it to him out of the backfield? Like he, he's got some Jaden Reed, like handoff yeah. juice. Oh, you know, you for get sure. Yeah. I, uh, I, Keegan, I don't know if you saw this, but JJ Zacharyson was like, if you're looking for this year's Jaden Reed, it's Ricky Pearsall. And that was like three weeks ago, right? So like he, he was all over that. Um, super strong testing, like jumped out the gym on the vertical and broad jump. And then his agility drills, he, he crushed. Uh, Keegan, thoughts on Pearsall? Like I know we've talked a lot about slot receivers. Like where does he stand out among slot receivers in this class for you? Well, so he actually only in 2023, he played about 57% of his snaps out of the slot. He did line up out wide about 42%. And I think, good. you know, he led his team in yards per route run. I mean, he led his team in first downs earned. Like he's obviously a player that they want to get the ball in his hands. And he's just like so skilled. Like I think as a player, he also has some hilarious tattoos. Really like, rough. All, really rough. All tattoos. time bad tattoos. And I think that bumps his stock for me like he's got the bet confidence. on me <laughs> yes irrational confidence because he just has the most ridiculous tattoos but no i think i think he's going to be a very um like highly touted dynasty not dynasty player but like fantasy football player for years to come just because he's going to be an effective player not only earning targets but like getting the ball in his hands too like really athletic the drop pff grade really sticks out to me like he does not drop a ton of balls either yeah, and really. i think that blend of slot percentage like lineup on his routes and like also out wide gives him a lot of flexibility to be moved around the field which is kind of what you need in today's nfl like you have to be able to play a little bit of both especially be effective in fantasy for years to come so i really like ricky pearsall that catch is going to be like ingrained in my brain forever yeah, I, i've it got ricky absurd. pearsall ahead of jalen polk ahead of roman wilson ahead of xavier legat and then troy franklin and keon coleman there you can make an argument he can jump both of them too so he's yeah. fast. I have him underrated. in like the eight to ten range. Yeah, to your point, yeah, like the three you mentioned, like are no brainers that I would put, like put out. What are the knocks, if any, on Pearsall that people have discussed online? Like, have you seen anything age. that people like don't necessarily don't like about the profile? Age, age. Like, age. like the press, like you know, he can definitely get knocked off routes, but role um, player, like a role like player. If he type gets a clean receiver. release, though, you know, like yeah, he's a good player. But age is probably the biggest one. Like twenty four is significantly older than a guy like you know marvin harrison that's going to be 2021 20, this fall you know it's that window is so short in the nfl but um i'd say age like the biggest knock and you need a plan for him right away on that rookie contract right receivers yeah. are ultra valuable if he's 24 years old during his rookie year like he's going to need to play and yeah in the nfl he might he might be more of like a Jaden reed type where he's like a slot only like uh, specially special plays, right? Like running the ball, you know, screens, um, screens. But Harmon thinks he's somebody that eventually could get 120 targets in a season. So, like he he thinks he's that good of a player. Um, 
I don't. I, I know about in my Matt Harmon knows more about ball in his pinky tip than <laughs> I do, right? So like, I, I'm gonna trust his receiver ball yeah. knowledge on that regard, and uh, I'm gonna lean into to Pearsall because I, I I can't believe this is the same guy. I remember watching the the Florida tape talking about Anthony Richardson's receiving core um, when we were doing draft prep for quarterbacks, and I was like, <laughs> who the fuck is Richardson throwing to? <laughs> His best receiver is this number one, and like he he's like he can't do anything. And then you you put on the tape the next year, and it's like, wow, he made real strides. Uh, he yeah. he developed as as a as a true technician, especially as a route runner. So it's, also it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, just like the comparing the two years too, like his percentages from slot and out wide, like they shifted quite a bit. I mean, his twenty twenty two season with oh, Anthony yeah. Richardson, he ran like seventy one percent of his routes out of the slot, and that goes all the way down to like 50, what I say, 54%, yeah. you know, the, so yeah. he's definitely grown for sure in the past two years, but I, th- I think he's a really good player. Yeah. Well, draft Jalen McMillan, Lad McConkey, and draft Ricky Pearsall. Those are three undervalued players that you should be prioritizing in dynasty rookie drafts. If you have any questions, like where are these guys going? What picks would you value them at? Feel free to send them our way in the comments below on this video. And you should go check out our overvalued rookie wide receiver episode next. All right. Thank you guys for joining. Anything to say to the listeners before we jump? Go get Ricky Pearsall. <laughs> go get him. Just go not in Aiden's leagues. Don't, don't get him in Aiden's leagues. Not in my league. Not in my league. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, thank you again for hopping on. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Until next time.